How's it going, guys? First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for getting me past 100 subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. Thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed and everyone who's just viewed the, my videos. I do it, like I say, I really appreciate it. So today, what I figured I'd do is go through my gear that I've been using this fall or autumn, depending on where you are. Uh, I went to go and actually make a video yesterday and ended up reversing my truck into a tree and yeah, damaging the tailgate and shearing the canoe rack that I have. So I had to come back here in the dark and wait for today to assess the damage. My cousin is actually coming today from Australia. So we're gonna spend a week camping and the plan was to take the canoe out. The plan is to take the canoe out. I've assessed it and the damage isn't so bad. The uh, USS Abraham is still seaworthy. So, <laughs> so that's good news, that's good news. But let's just not talk about the truck. Any anyway, so let's get to it. The first item, obviously, the backpack. Everybody needs a good backpack or rucksack or whatever you guys want to call it. This is my Granite Gear Crown 260 and I love this thing. It is awesome. I think this is maybe one of the best packs for backpacking bushcraft because it's lightweight, number one, compared to my old field and stream backpack that I used to have. This is like three pounds heavier but it has plenty of pockets this top piece the brain as they call it is fully removable it just clips off if I can reach the clip there you go and then on top you have a roll top design So it can be used with or without the brain. Uh, I prefer to have the brain because I like to keep my paracord in the top. So that way if I'm stringing up the top, I have easy access to it. I also like this, this big pouch on the front because that means when, like if my tarp or say if I have a tent, if it's wet after a long day and I want to pack up, I don't want to put it in my bag with the rest of my stuff. I can just stick it in this front pocket and it'll dry out a bit before I get somewhere where I can hang it up and dry it. So absolutely love this pack, Granite Gear Crown 260. Awesome, awesome pack. The next piece of gear that I've been carrying a lot this fall, which you've probably seen if you've watched my video, is my AquaQuest. This is an AquaQuest 10x10 tarp. It's the lightest one they do. I'm six foot tall and 10 by 10 for most configurations seems to fit me perfectly. They do make them in biggest sizes. They do a 10 by seven, I believe. And then they do a 13 by 20. And in some of the other series, you can even go up to a 20 by 20. But like I say, for me as an individual, the 10 by 10 works perfectly. I think if I was going with two people, I've had me and the dog in it. I would like to get a 13 by 10. I think that would be ideal for two people. But like I say, you can go all the way up to 20 by 20, which would be massive, but it'd be awesome if you know, you're going on a trip and you were gonna get rained out uh, quite a couple times. Just sit around the campfire. That'd be a great, great shout. But yeah, uh, AquaQuest 10 by 10 in olive drab, the best color. Awesome, absolutely love it, love it. Next up is my sleeping bag. This is a hike and bike Eolus 15 degree bag. Has a comfort rating of 50 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's around uh, probably, well, it's freezing, zero, 32 is freezing, and 50, which I believe is probably around 12 to 15 degrees. Maybe a little less than that, probably less than that. But yeah, this has been great. I've enjoyed this a lot. It's an 800 fill down sleeping bag with hydrophobic goose down. 
And this bag has kept me warm so far in the fall this year. I've been out in this in a night when it was 33 degrees Fahrenheit. So just above freezing and right at what they consider to be the comfort range. And I was warm. I was absolutely fine. The only thing is it's a bit slippery, like a lot of bags are these days. So I would twist, the bag would twist underneath me. And then if the bit that I'd just been compressing, lying on, was then exposed to the air, it, I would get, I would feel a little bit of the cold. But like I say, it's been great. I've enjoyed it. It has kept me warm on nights where it's got into the 30s. I know a lot of people like wool blankets. I've been out with the wool blankets when it's been cold and anything below 50 degrees, I just, I freeze. I absolutely freeze. So great bag. Next up is my sleeping pad. It's a Thermarest Neo Air X Lite Max. And when it says Max, that means, as you can see, it's a square pad. I've always liked the square pad. Uh, my sleeping pad before this one was the Thermarest Neo Air Venture. And this is a great pad. This is a pretty much exactly the same. I get them both in large. So that means they're 77 inches long. And I believe the square ones are 25 inches wide. So at six foot, they are absolutely perfect for me. One thing I will say about the x Lite compared to the Venture, this one is more expensive, right? This one retails for like $200. I got it on sale. I got the Max on sale. This one is less than 100. This one has an R value of 1.8. Okay, so it's a, it's a summer sleeping pad. This one is a bit more all purpose and it has an R value of 3.0. So that's why I got this for using in the fall. But I've had this for years and it only I've only ever punctured it once. It is made of a much thicker material than this one. This one, so far, I've punctured it twice and I've only had it four months, three months. In defense of the x light this big horrible puncture repair that you see i was <laughs> i was laying on it smoking a cigar in my thunderstorm video most recent thunderstorm video and a bug flew up my sleeve and i dropped the cigar and burned a hole in it so i can't really blame thermarest for that but i repaired it and it's been working fine of course guy down the street has decided to cut his grass right now typical but anyway next piece of gear which I carry pretty much all year round obviously I won't be doing this I was on a backpacking long distance hike but for most trips the Spensor that I carry with me pretty much all the time it's great it packs down and yeah it's been good it's been good so far I've enjoyed it really enjoyed it Another piece of gear I've been carrying with me a lot this fall since I got it. Actually, I only got this in September. Is my Holter Fuzz Echelon 19 inch Hunter's Axe. 19 inch handle. Nice little leather sheath. And it's cool. I've really enjoyed this. This is my first axe like this. This was the old one that I had. This is a Fiskars X11. This is actually a little splitting hatchet. It's a little bit heavier than this. As you can see, it's got a splitting. It's got a, like a V shape for splitting. Whereas this one doesn't. But yeah, so far. So far, I've really enjoyed this. I've had a lot of questions about this, whether I would get this or the hatchet that Holtifers makes and I would and have recommended to the people who have asked, I would go with the Hunter's Axe 19 inch handle any day. It's just, 
I've never had one like I say before this. I've had hatches before and this is just such a better all-purpose bushcraft camping axe. Like I said, the 19 inch handle, so much better leverage for doing all sorts of different type of work and it's still light enough to carry in your pack. So the Holtifers Echelon, great axe. What are some of the other things I carry? Well, some of the smaller items I carry, always a pair of leather gloves, great for breaking sticks, you know, doing work, um, make sure you don't cut yourself, or, and also grabbing like hot grills, hot sticks, things like that. A pair of good leather gloves is a must for me. I also carry twig stove. I have the solo stove. Not, this isn't a bush buddy, it's the solo stove. I got it off Amazon, I've had this for years now. Same design as the bush buddy. Little one person tweak stove. Excellent, love it, it's great. I also have a little gas stove, which sometimes I like to bring on shorter trips, but if I were going on longer trips, this is so much better because you know you're not gonna run out of gas. You know there's always going to be twigs on the ground depending on where you are. So yeah, solo stove is a great little stove. Next item I always have with me, little tokes. Little tokes 750. This one has the bale handle. It's a great little pot, I love this. I much prefer, I like, I have a um, canteen with a nesting pot. And I prefer this because I just get a better drink out of it. And now there's an it's October and there's an ice cream man coming around. This guy cutting his grass. The guy selling ice cream. I don't know what the. It's just what is going on. Global warming is real. Ice cream man coming around in October. Cheese and rice. But anyway, Toke 750 sits perfectly on the Solo stove. The canteen, because this has, I don't know if you can see the three prongs on the top that this actually sits on. Oh, there goes my towel. The canteen doesn't sit. Oh. The canteen doesn't sit on that as well. So I much prefer taking the 750 over the canteen. Obviously one of the most important pieces of gear that you can take out in the woods with you is a knife, cutting tool of some kind. This is my preferred one. This is a Benchmade Bushcrafter. Has a nice thick blade for really whacking on it, really beating on it when you want to do some batoning. Very sharp, Benchmade knives are very sharp. It does have a convex blade, so it can be a pain to sharpen. I actually sent this one back to Benchmade so they could sharpen it for me because I didn't want to mess it up. And ended up getting a little Mora companion for like $15 whilst I waited for this one to come back. But they actually turned it around very quickly and the sharpening is free. So, highly recommend them. And then last but not least, an item that always comes with me. This is a new one I just got from Ooh, Berlebin. Here's my ferro rod, fire steel. This is so this is one another thing along with the tokes. This is one thing that no matter what I'm doing, where I'm going, what type of trip I'm on, canoe trip. Uh, hiking trip, backpacking trip, day hike, hunting, even going hunting. I bring this with me. You never know. I've got to a point now where I'm pretty confident I can light fires with these things, so. Ferro rod is a must. Always bring this with me. So, that's some of the gear that I've been bringing out with me this fall. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, normally my gear is linked below in my other videos, but if you have any questions about some of the other gear I have and the other gear I bring, 
you know please leave me a comment please give me a like go check out some of my other videos please subscribe and to everyone who has already subscribed thank you so much I really appreciate it and this week I will be taking out the canoe with my cousin hopefully so I'll look out for that video next week thanks guys take it easy